Hi, GPR Jones here. In this video, I am intending to give a brief outline of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or DMCA for short. In particular, Section 512 of the DMCA, which deals with takedown notices and the service of counter notices. In doing so, I am attempting to condense a complex area of law into a few minutes. Therefore, please do not take this as definitive legal advice. If you are in any doubt, please seek the assistance of a qualified lawyer in whatever jurisdiction you are in. To many people, the law is an uninteresting topic and it's difficult to make it interesting. Please don't expect too many laughs or jokes in this video. The first and most important point to understand is that Section 512 is intended to provide protection to Internet service providers such as YouTube against an action for copyright infringement. Hopefully, this quick example will show what I mean. Imagine person A goes to a cinema to watch the premiere of a blockbuster film. He takes with him some form of recording device. He records the entire film. Let's call this person Alan. Alan has a friend called Brian. He gives Brian his copy of the blockbuster film. Brian loads it onto his YouTube channel. And now all the world can see the blockbuster film for free. In this situation, Alan, Brian and, this is the important bit, YouTube are all in breach of copyright. The copyright holder could sue all or any of them. As they are unlikely to know who Alan is or be able to find him, and as Brian probably has no money, he is therefore not worth suing. So the copyright owners are likely to want to sue YouTube. They know where YouTube are, and they know that YouTube has the money to meet any award of damages that might be made against them. However, provided the Internet Service Provider, or YouTube in this case, comply with the terms of Section 512, they will escape all liability. That is why the provisions of the section are known as the Safe Harbour provisions. The harbour is for YouTube. The safety it affords them is against liability for copyright infringement. But in order to benefit from the Safe Harbour provisions, they must comply with the terms of Section 512. One such term is Section 512C1C, which reads as follows. Upon notification of claimed infringement as described in paragraph 3, responds expeditiously to remove or disable access to the material that is claimed to be infringing, or to be the subject of infringing activity. Section 3 deals with the elements that must be included in a takedown notice. These are more readily found by going to the bottom of a YouTube page, pressing on Copyright Notices, then on Copyright Complaint Web Form. All the required information, that is to say the information required in section 512C3A 1 to 6, is contained in that web form, which can be submitted directly to YouTube. As I said, YouTube are under a statutory obligation to remove the material. Although they can be criticised for many things, this is not one of them. It is not their job to determine whether the material actually infringes copyright, nor could they. That is for a court to determine. They are also under no obligation to check the accuracy of the information given in the notice. Although it could be argued that they could show greater respect to their users by doing so. However, given their precarious financial position, it is perhaps unrealistic to expect them to do so. It is perhaps worth noting that Section 512, and in particular the section indicating what information is required in a take down notice, includes a declaration under penalty of perjury that the person submitting the notice does so with the authorization of the copyright holder. There are also statutory penalties for making misrepresentations in a takedown notice. Another point to note is this. There is no obligation on the person serving the notice to take any formal legal proceedings against the alleged infringer. So what happens when YouTube receive a takedown notice? Firstly, as I've indicated, they are under a statutory obligation to remove the video expeditiously. They are also obliged to notify the person upon whom the notice was served. That person then has an option as to whether or not to serve a counter notice. The requirements of a counter notice are set out in section 512 G3A to D, 
If a counter notice is served, they must serve a copy of that notice on the person who served the initial takedown notice, and unless they are informed that formal legal proceedings have been issued, then they should restore access to that video between 10 and 14 days after receipt of the counter notice. So what needs to go into a counter notice? What form does it have to take? Unlike takedown notices, you cannot serve a counter notice directly from a YouTube page. Why not? Don't ask me, ask YouTube, and good luck in getting an answer. Before going into the detail of what must be included in a counter notice, let me make one point. It has to include your name, address, and telephone number, and YouTube are under a statutory duty to disclose a copy of the counter notice to the person who issued the takedown notice. This may seem unfair, but again, this is not YouTube's fault. It is the fault of the DMCA, or those who drafted it. As for what form a counter notice takes, I advise that you visit chillingeffects.org. A link is in the description. It contains useful information on the DMCA, and also includes helpful guidance on how to complete a counter notice. A link to the specific page that you want is given in the description. If you fill in all the boxes, it will generate a standard letter for you automatically. All you need to do is add the detail or details of the relevant video or videos onto a separate sheet of paper. The best way of identifying the videos is by using YouTube's own numbering system, or their URL. Having done that, you can fax the letter to them. Their address and fax number is in the description. Alternatively, you can scan it into the computer and email it to them. Alternatively, you can also post it to them. I would recommend doing all three. There is one problem with this process. That is to say, if you do not live in the United States, this will not work. My advice in such circumstances is to do this. Go to the chillingeffects.org site on the page I've recommended. Complete the form as if you were living in America, that is to say, tick the box that says that you do. It will then generate a letter for you. You will then have to amend that letter, removing the second paragraph relating to jurisdiction, and replace it with a paragraph that I've contained in the description. Do not expect YouTube to act with the same expedition in responding to your counter notice as they do in responding to a takedown notice. My experience tells me that they will not. It is worth chasing up their legal department after a few days to ensure that they have received your counter notice and that they are acting on it. If it does not comply with the statutory requirements, they are likely to ignore it and not tell you. I hope you have found this information helpful. Again, please do not take this as definitive legal advice. If in any doubt, consult a lawyer in your own jurisdiction. Thank you all very much for watching.